Hi, it's CNT140. We're looking at chapter 15 on fiber optic installation practices. Again, um, a lot of this is going to be for, for familiarity. We're going to do at least one of these methods in class or in lab. The other ones will at least be familiar, familiar if we run into them or happen to see them. We understand what's going on. Okay. So first thing, they remind us of some safety rules. Yes, important. Uh, keep food and beverages out of the work area. You don't want to ingest any of the stuff that we're working on. Uh, wear protective clothing. Wear your safety glasses. Absolutely. We'll be wearing those as we work in the lab on fiber. Never look directly into the end of the fiber. Yes, yes, yes. we got to make sure the light source is alt, off. And I put a reminder down here. Some of our light sources are laser quality that can do damage. Um, so you just need to be careful that. Make sure that cable is not connected if you're looking at the end of it for any reason. Work in a well-ventilated area. Yes, some of the chemicals we're using for cleaning um, have a lot of odor to them. So work ventilated area. Don't handle anything in our eyes. Keep con combustibles away. Um, put your cut fiber pieces in a safe place. Our cleaver has a little bin that keeps them in. Uh, clean when you're done. Don't eat or drink. Do not inspect unless no light is, is present on the other end of the cable. Absolutely. All those are important to follow. And our biggest risk on that is really uh, the fiber inspection scope, um, making sure there is no light source attached to it as we're inspecting the end of the fiber. Okay. Typical toolkit. Uh, this is a typical toolkit if you're working with like epoxy type connector ends. This is the kind of stuff you have, your cable, your curing oven, your epoxy, your polishing pads, your wipes, your crimpers, um, your strippers, all that kind of good stuff. Here's the kind of tool kit we're going to have for doing our ends. We're actually going to use a fusion splicer type uh, end on our cable. So we'll have the fusion splicer itself, we'll have the fiber cleaver, and then we'll also have the tool kit that goes along with our buffer stripper, our uh, strength fiber cutters, and then we do have some cleaners, and we do have a few little adapters for different types of cable that would be used in our fusion splicer. The first thing they mention with dealing with cabling or installing cabling is attaching your pull eye or swivel eye. Uh, what needs to happen is you'll carefully cut away the outside jacket to expose the strength fiber here and then you're actually going to tie any sort of cable puller onto the strength fibers not the actual fiber optic fiber and not the jacket onto the strength fibers here. So any kind of pull eye or swivel will be connected onto that and then you'll tape it up and that'll actually be the part that you pull the cable with. Uh, so it's attached to those Kevlar strands or the strength fibers in there. And here, I, I think I used this picture before reminding you, I'm attaching those strength fibers onto a swivel or a pull eye. And that way I'm not stressing the jacket or the fiber optic fibers inside the cable. I can also have a cable that's already terminated, and I would use a special pull eye that protects all my connectors. Uh, that can be done as well. That can be done as well. Reminding as I'm dealing with fiber optic, I'm typically going to pull it off the spool. I'm going to make sure the spool is up and suspended, whether it even be on a special stand or take a broom handle through the spool and uh, put it between two chairs kind of thing. Let that cable, the, that spool spin as you pull it off. Do not unwind it from the side. Uh, that's going to start putting all kinds of twists in it that eventually you're going to start twisting the fiber, putting stress on it, and breaking the glass strands inside. If I am pulling fiber optic into a junction box of some sort and I need to pull cable before I do the next piece of conduit, what I can do is carefully lay it on the floor in a figure eight pattern. The idea there is I'm not spooling it up where it's going to twist as I'm pulling it back out. When I lay it in a figure eight pattern and pull it out later on, uh, the fiber does not have a tendency to twist on itself. So that's a little tip to do, a little tip to do for uh, dealing with fiber. Removing the cable jacket, um, they, we're actually going to use a cable slitter, this guy right here, uh, this, type of, uh, this type of tool here. What happens is I, uh, I adjust that so it's just going to cut through the jacket, not the whole way. Um, spin it around once or twice so it cuts the cable jacket, and then I'm going to bend the cable back and forth a little bit so it breaks the rest of the way through, and then I'll slide the cable jacket off. 
Once I have a little chunk of that off, I will then, the little string fiber, the rip cord that's in there, I'll grip that with like a pair of pliers, and I'll use the rip cord to slit the cable jacket down further until I have enough of it exposed. Then I use the cable slitter again to cut around here, and then I can pull that whole section of cable jacket off. That's the rough process I do. And then I end up having something that looks like this when I'm done. They remind us that that's roughly the procedure I'm going to use on a couple different types of cables. So they talk about breakout cables, or hopefully this to remember from before, your breakout cable here. Um, I actually have a bundle of fibers in a case, 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 in a case all in a larger jacket uh, to make up my cable. I use the same rough process for distribution cables too. Distribution cables look like this guy. I have a, uh, a bundle of cables in here just in one outer jacket. Okay, So the breakout, I had a couple small bundles in a jacket. Here, all the fibers in the distribution are in one jacket, one big bundle. They also remind us about outside plant cable, whether it be loose tube cable like I have here. This might be an armored cable. Actually, I have a piece of armored cable here. This would be like a loose tube cable. This is your armored cable backing up right there. Oops. Um, that might be an outside plant type cable. This can be installed underground, um, even even in a conduit as well. Uh, and I might also have aerial cable too. Just reminding you of this, we mentioned this back I think in chapter 11 and 12. Uh, just kind of refreshing your memory on aerial cable. In this case, this would be something between two telephone poles. This is the actual uh, strength part of the cable that gets anchored to the poles, and then that suspends the fiber underneath so they don't stretch and break. Armored cable there, we mentioned before, this can be typically buried underground, and the arming is really there for rodent protection, so critters do not chew through that. Well, with any kind of armored cable like that, I would use an armored cable slitter. I actually put a P in there, I apologize. Uh, armored cable slitter. This almost looks like a pipe cutter, and that's kind of what it is. I'll adjust it to the diameter, and then I give it a spin or two around till it cuts through the outer jacket, and then I, I do the whole wiggle back and forth, if you will, till the jacket is broken through and then slide it off. And then do the whole, um, the rip cord, pull that down to it so it cuts it off, cut another ring around here, and then slide that jack off. And I just do it in pieces, if you will. And then pull my um, cable out of the armored jacket. Zip cord, um, this is this will be the type we're using. This will be inside plant uh, zip cord. I'm basically going to just pull these two strands apart and then pull my jacket off and actually use a, almost looks like a cable cutter if you will to pull the 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 cut that out the jacket off of those individual fibers all right so with my zip cord i'll split the two strands apart i'll take my boot my little cable strain relief boot slide it on one of my strands then i will strip off the outer jacket and i use basically a cable stripper like this and you notice there's two different size notches the larger notch is to cut this outer jacket off the inner notch is to cut the buffer off okay so i'll cut off the outer jacket I'll just cut off my strength fibers with my little Kevlar scissors here. Once I've done that, I'll then use the uh, stripper. I didn't put it in there, but I'll use the stripper to pull the buffer off the cable too. I'll get to that in a second. They then remind us of different types of connector ends. Yes, review these. SCST, MTRJ, LC. Make sure you can sort them out. This is pretty much a review of what we've said before. Okay. Now, they then talk about some different types of connections that I would put on my cable. So let's look at a, an epoxy polish version that I might do. With an epoxy polish, what I'm doing is I'm going to strip the insulin. Here's the jacket. I cut the, the jacket off. Um, I then have the buffer in here. I'll strip the buffer off till I have just the fiber. And what happens is the fiber gets fed through the connector, epoxied in place, and then I score and cleave the fiber off and polish it to the end. Polish it even with the end of the connector out there. That's your epoxy polish. So um, after I've cut the jacket away, after I've cut the strength fibers away, then I use my stripper to cut the buffer off the fiber. So now I have just the bare fiber. Okay. Uh, I, I mix up my epoxy, put it in the connector, slide the fiber through the connector. The fiber actually comes out the end, as you see here. Once it comes out the end, I use my little scoring tool, that's this guy, and I score it around here, and I literally grab this end and kind of pull up, and it'll, it'll snap off. Once I do, it's all but even with the end, but there'll be a little burr there, so I do an air polish. An air polish is actually um, almost like a 
a super, super, super fine sandpaper that I'm going to bend in a U, and I'm going to take my connector on the end just to get that burr off. And then I actually put the connector into my polishing pad here, and I will move this around in figure eight pattern to polish the fiber to smooth to the end of the connector. That's my epoxy polish version. That's kind of the first fiber connector uh, method that most people used. Generation two, if you will, I do the exact same process, but I use a material that's almost like a hot melt glue. So I strip the buffer, you know, I cut the jacket away, I cut the strength fibers away, I strip the buffer off the fiber, so I have bare fiber. I use a hot melt type adhesive in my connector. I heat it up so it uh, heats and then I let it cool so it glues the fiber in place. Then I do the whole scribe, cleave, air polish, polish the end of the fiber to the end of the connector. And here they talk about here's your air polish where you just you knock the burr off the end of the fiber and then you actually install it in the little polishing pad here and you do this in figure eight pattern back and forth. There we go, figure eight pattern, there we go. Okay. And so I polish off the end of that fiber even with the end of the connector. And then I check it with my microscope to make sure it's a nice clean connection. Those were like generation one and two, the epoxy polish and then the hot melt polish methods. Next generation kind of came along, and this was a crimp method. In this case, I have my connector with a pre-terminated fiber stub in here. This is already in place and glued in place. So what I do now is I prep the fiber, cleave it, and I slide it until it just touches, and then I crimp the whole fiber in place so it doesn't move. So this kind, I'm using uh, usually something like a Corning Unicam connector to do this. Here's some samples, and I'm going to use their vise to crimp the fiber in place crimp the fiber in place, um, and then uh, literally just re re attach the connector around it. So this little vise here, as I lay the fiber in, I actually use this little bar to come around and it kind of dents this little ring to hold the fiber into the connector. Then I assemble the rest of the connector. So this process looks like this. I cut the jacket away. I cut the strength fibers away. I strip the buffer off the fiber. I clean the fiber. I load the fiber into a cleaver here, uh, so the fiber lays here, and then the clear fiber strand comes across here. And this little guy, this little cleaver, almost reminds you of like a pizza cutter. Uh, inside is a diamond, industrial diamond impregnated wheel that, um, as I push this lever down, the wheel comes up to nick the bottom of the fiber, and then there's a little roller on this side that grabs hold of that fiber and pulls it off. So I just scored and broke the fiber off. Then I slide the fiber into the connector, and then once it's into the connector, I bring the bar over to give it a little crimp on the end here so that it um, crimps the collar on it to keep the fiber in place. We used this method for a little while, um, and then now the modern, the most modern method we use is this guy here, the splice method. In this case, we're going to use a Fuse Connect uh, connector, and I'm going to use a Fusion Splicer to make this work. So now what happens is the connector itself comes like this in a little sled. This is the actual ferrule end here. There is a pre-terminated fiber stub into the connector here, and the little fiber sticks out the end just a teeny little bit. So I'm going to load that into my fusion splicer. There it is right there. A little stub is sticking in here. I will take my fiber, cut the jacket away, cut the strength members away, strip off the buffer. I'll then clean the fiber. There's the bare fiber there. I'll load it in my cleaver. I will score, and, and uh, the cleaver itself will break that strand off. Then I take this whole little sled. This is like a little vise, a little magnetic vise. I'll take that vise out and lay it right into the fiber fusion splicer, and that fiber lays right across here. And now what happens is the fusion splicer, there's my, my fiber here, and this is the little connector that came, all kind of prepackaged. What happens in here in the fusion splicer then is there's an electric arc that goes across here, and these two little fibers, you can just see them in there right above my pointer, boom and boom. It heats up that area, and those two little fibers are going to melt just a little bit, and then the fusion splicer itself is going to slide this side in, it's going to slide this side in just until those two fibers touch, and it's going to let it cool, and they're going to be fused together like they're one piece of uh, glass, one piece of solid piece of glass. That's the method we're going to use to fuse on a connector onto the end of our fiber. And that's the most modern way, and from what I know right now, that's what most connections are being done, especially in the field.
Okay, so that's the method we'll use as we terminate our fiber. But there's a quick overview of a bunch of different types of methods of terminating fiber optic.